Welcome back. Tomorrow is a big day for getting back to the moon. NASA and the Canadian Space Agency will unveil the names of the astronauts heading to the moon in preparation for the first landing since 1972. Artemis II mission will blast off on November 2024. In November 2024, four astronauts, including a Canadian, will loop around the moon during the first ever human lunar mission since Apollo 17. As we said, that was back in December 1972. The hope is returning to the moon will be a permanent and serve as a potential launch pad to Mars. So it's a, a stop, if you will. For more on all of this, we have reached CBC's national science commentator and host of Quirks and Quarks, the one and only Bob McDonald. Bob, <laughs> thank you so much for making time for us. A Canadian, we know the key to this mission. This will be taking humans further to space for decades than we have seen in decades. How significant mm -hmm. is this milestone for NASA, but also for Canada? Well, it's uh, significant in a number of ways, Natalie. We're finally leaving the Earth and going to another celestial body. Uh, you know, for the last 50 years, we've just been going around and around the Earth. And the, the International Space Station is a great project and all, but now we're getting to really explore, go to other worlds, and uh, do what we did before, but do it better. And the fact that Canada's along there, this is a continuation because we've been part of the space program from the very, very beginning. And so it's appropriate that we're taking it back to the moon and hopefully on to Mars. And as we know, the U.S. has already gone to the moon. So why go back? Well, uh, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, the moon is a, a good place to practice for what we're going to need on Mars, to practice how to build habitats, how to live on another world. If something goes wrong, you're only three days from home. If you go to Mars, uh, you're about seven to eight months from home. And uh, that's a long way for an ambulance or a tow truck to come. So it's it's a practice session. It's also a way to explore the moon because the moon is, is very, very old. And it tells us about, you know, the origin of our solar system and, and how the Earth came to be, how it came to be. So there's a lot of geology to go on there. And they're going to be looking for ice. It's believed that there's a lot of ice at the south pole of the moon. So they're going to be uh, prospecting for that, digging for that. That's not only drinking water, but it's also rocket fuel. And it's good to live off the land, so to speak. So uh, as you say, it's a stepping stone on the way to Mars. Right, a little, a little trampoline as we shoot further out into the <laughs> cosmos, if you will. OK, 23 yeah. nations have signed what's called the Artemis Accords. Take us through what they are and why it matters. Well, it uh, it matters because everybody's agreeing to do the same thing. We need some treaties on the moon. Nobody owns the moon. So there's going to be some interesting legal issues there where who owns what when you get there. If you find some ice, you get mineral rights to that. And so they all mm. want to agree on, on how we're going to treat the moon, how we're going to go there. And Canada is part of this, just as we have been. You know, I, I uh, most people don't realize that Canadians have been involved since the very beginning. We, we had, uh, at the beginning, when our astronauts are, our, our engineers from the Avro Aero Project, which was Canada's supersonic jet that was canceled in the early 60s, those engineers went to NASA and they, they brought the Americans to the moon the first time. We've had our astronauts flying on the rockets and we've had our scientific instruments up there doing the science, even on Mars. So it's, it's all part of how we're going to proceed, this agreement with all these countries to go together because no one country can do it. It's too expensive. So it's good that we're all contributing to this, including Canada. Okay, so besides an astronaut, or not, what will Canada's contribution be to these missions going forward? Well, the astronaut component is very important. Uh, what this astronaut's going to do on this mission is to check out the spacecraft, make sure that everything actually works. But Canada's going to be building an, a Canadarm 3. There's going to be a, a space station that's going to be built around the moon that will also be a way station, and it's going to have a Canadarm 3. So we had Canadarm 1 on the space shuttles, Canadarm 2 on the International Space Station, which is still up there, and the Canadarm 3. So we'll be adding technology. We're also building a rover that will be driving around, a remote rover that will be driving around on the surface of Mars. So we'll be adding uh, technology and we'll be adding scientific instruments to study the moon itself, as we always have. That's what we do. I like to think of Canada as a silent partner in, this, in the space program. We don't make a lot of noise about it because we don't build the big rockets. But we're there. We're there with our expertise. And, and that's what we're good at. And that's going to continue in the future. I love it. Bring on the humble brags, I say. OK, <laughs> the million dollar question, Bob, which Canadian astronaut do you think will be chosen and why? 
Well, I really believe it's going to be Jeremy Hansen because Jeremy's been waiting 14 years to fly in space. He's highly qualified. He's a former F-18 fighter pilot. He knows how to fly big machines really fast. And that's what this mission is about. Let's see if this thing can fly. Let's see if the people can live in it. Let's see if they can get to the moon and back safely. Let's see if they can survive the radiation that's out there. You were asking me earlier about the Van Allen radiation belts. The radiation around the moon is a serious issue. So they're going to be looking at their bodies, how that, that behavior and just shake the whole thing down, and uh, he's going to have an amazing flight. Uh, if it's Jeremy or whoever it is, it's going to be a, an amazing flight. They're going to get to see the Earth from a distance, from another world, and we haven't done that since 1972. So I hope it's Jeremy. Uh, whoever it is, though, they're going to have an amazing time. Well, we'll have to wait to find out for sure, but thank you for your time today, Bob. Bob McDonald, the host of CBC's Quirks and Quarks.